Good afternoon. In early 2022, I was having a conversation with a close friend of mine, James Burke, about the trials and tribulations of growing up as a gay man in Ireland. As a result of these conversations, he asked me to talk at this event, as he thought I might have something worth sharing. Fast forward to late November last year, and life had gotten a bit hectic, and suddenly the thought of planning this speech and delivering it to all of you became a little bit daunting on top of everything else that life was throwing me at the time. I considered pulling out. Uh, I considered just packing it in and thinking that's one less thing to worry about. It was around the same time that some devastating news came from Colorado Springs in the United States. Uh, a mass shooting had happened in a gay bar there. Daniel Aston, Raymond Green Vance, Kelly Loving, Ashley Powell, and Derek Rump all simply went to a bar to be entertained and instead, due to someone else's misinformed homophobia and hatred, they never came home. Luckily, more people didn't lose their lives that night because of the bravery of some of the other customers at the bar who tackled the shooter and stopped them. If those people can find bravery, and if these people can stop the noise, there we go. If those people can find bravery in the face of such violence and hatred, then what excuse could I finally possibly find to not stand up here and talk to you today? I came out at the age of 26. I'm currently 35. And when I tell friends that I've made in the recent few years, uh, that I've, the fact that I came out at 26, they're always shocked. I never really understood why they were so shocked. And I realized that it comes from the shock that they can't imagine me living my life not as this authentic gay man. They couldn't imagine this other person who must have existed before that fact. In fact, I often think if I could go back and talk to 16-year-old Garod and tell him about the freedom at which I live with right now, I don't think I could have been convinced that that was actually ever going to be a reality and not just some sort of fantasy. Why did it take me so long to be honest about who I was? I didn't dare to be different. I lived in fear. Fear of rejection from my family, although deep down I really knew that there was no way they wouldn't accept me. Unfortunately, due to the culture or the environment or however you want to look at where I grew up, I had become convinced that the thought that the possibility of them rejecting me was astronomically high, and that wasn't true. Fortunately, uh, my family have accepted me for exactly who I am, but unfortunately, that's not the case for everyone else who comes out. I also lived in fear of ridicule. The world I grew up in was a world flooded with homophobic language. The language was so ubiquitous that you kind of forgot that the words were actually slurs. Uh, the homophobia was so internalized, so ingrained at that stage of my life, that I actually used that language too. Even after I reached a point of realization about who I truly was, so even after I realized that when I used those words, I was in fact talking about myself, I still used them. Because at the end of the day, I didn't want those words being used against me. I didn't want to be the topic of some conversation in a hushed circle where people would go, do you hear about Garod? He's a, you know, one of those. I didn't want to be the butt of a joke. Spoiler alert, me being gay is still the butt of the joke for all my straight male 35-year-old mates back in Ireland. But at least I'm now in on the joke. And they don't use slurs anymore, at least when I'm there anyway. So, you know, progress. But at 26, I finally plucked up the courage to say those three terrifying words, I am gay. I always found the responses to the term I am gay to be a bit of a mixed bag. There's the classic, you're gay. I mean, I just didn't think, I mean, I'm not, I'm not implying, I mean, you just don't give off that, you know. You know, now I have to be honest, at this stage of my life, I kind of enjoy those moments, because you get to come back with a, what Susan? What vibe aren't I giving off Susan? What do you mean by that Susan? Now, in reality, I know Susan meant nothing by that. And all I was really witnessing was someone's realization of their preconceived ideas of what it meant to be a gay man in 2022. However, and this goes out to all the gay kids out there, 
it's important to keep the straights on their toes. Rattle a few cages every now and again, you know? Keep them guessing. Another classic is, oh, sure we all knew you were gay. Oh, you did, did you? Oh, thanks for pointing out that me pretending to be straight all those years was a complete utter waste of my time and energy. I'm so glad I pretended to like girls all those years and pretended to not like guys. I'm so happy that I suppressed all my natural likes and interests for fear that they'd give me away. I am over the moon that I trained myself to not look at that person and to pretend to look at that person for fear that I'd be cut out. I am filled with glee that I vehemently trained myself how to walk and how to talk in case there was any incriminating evidence there. I am overcome with overwhelming joy that for over a decade you thought I was gay and didn't say anything while daily I wondered how am I going to maintain this lie until the day that I die. And yet, all that time, you never stood up and called out the homophobia that was swirling around us, did ya? Luckily, the world I grew up in doesn't exist anymore. In the not too distant past, I was involved in a silly little incident where some casual homophobia happened around me. It wasn't even directed at me, but I still felt that stab of childhood trauma coming back to haunt me, and therefore I didn't call it out, I didn't defend myself, I just removed myself from the scenario and pretended that it didn't happen. However, what happened next was something I could have never perceived as a teen. Some of the other straight guys that were there stepped in, called it out, and defended me. It was a beautiful moment. A moment of realization that things can in fact change. In 2015, in Ireland, we legalized same-sex marriage. The first country in the world to do it by popular vote, I will point out. Ten years previous, in 2005, I just started college, and the thought that in ten years' time that same-sex marriage would be legalized was inconceivable to me. Change is possible, but only when people make the change. For this world to really change, we need everybody on board. And straight, this is where I'm talking to you. If we want a future where kids can grow up in a world where they don't have to doubt and fear who they truly are, then we have to actively combat the things that are causing that fear. It can't just be us in the LGBTQI plus community singing from the rooftops. It has to be you too. If I call out someone's homophobia or transphobia publicly, there is a chance that I'll just be written off as another gay guy moaning about, insert whatever progressive talking point is in the news at the time. But the power that you have as a straight person to call it out is unparalleled because you're basically a peer calling out a peer. And unfortunately, it's often only at that moment that it sinks in that this type of homophobia, this transphobia isn't acceptable publicly. And maybe, just maybe, that person will think twice the next time they go to use one of those words. If you hear it in the classroom, call it out. If you hear it in the workplace, call it out. If you hear it in the locker room, call it out. If we all did it, imagine how quickly we could change the world. I urge you, call it out. And then, maybe, we'll have created a world where some 16-year-old won't have to wait a decade to truly be who they are. Maybe we'll have created a world where children won't live in fear about who they truly are. Change is possible, but only if we make it. Please, I urge you, dare to be different. Thank you.